Welcome back. It's a Monday and it's time for SME. And today joining us on SME is Rotarian Mr. Ben Dari of Benko Color Media. Now it's a wholly indigenous, dynamic and fully integrated printing press uh, with special emphasis on excellent quality when it comes to proactive service and service delivery. It's great to have you in the studio with us. Welcome, Mr. Ben. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to be here this morning to join right. you on this live uh, program. Thank you so, so much for taking our time from your busy schedule. But we need to know the story. Ben Coca-Cola, Ben, ben Coca-Cola started when? Wow. Uh, I would say it's a journey of grace. Uh, it started about uh, maybe 2001, 2002. I remember then that I quit my where I was working before, okay. and then I just have I took a decision that I would rather say is the best decision of my life. Okay. I took a decision that uh, having quit where I'm uh, working, I wanted to start my own business. Okay. And then looking back for those decisions, mm. it's one of the best decisions of my of my life so far. Just so people have a perspective, how old were you then when you decided to make that move? Uh, maybe around uh, about uh, 28, 30. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Exactly. But that's a very bold move. It's uh, very risky to just say you're going to go and start your own business. Did you have someone supporting you, someone encouraging you? Uh, what about that angle? Uh, that's why I said it's a journey of grace uh, for me. I remember back then that I have a, a sister that actually said, oh, she's ready to set me up. Okay. And then I, I remember I had to travel far as back to Kaduna. Wow. And then I was with her and I saw her. It's not probably maybe everything is so good for her okay. that uh, she has every other thing. And then I look at the environment and I, I just told myself, ah, you can do something with your life. Why not yeah. go back? And I went back I, without any support, without any, any encouragement from either family or wow. anybody. Wow. And then I decided to just start, uh, start the business. And then for me then, I was into graphic design. Okay. And then for me, I have a very good hands on it. Okay. And I was able to deliver. You can't see my concept then, my designs, and you will not fall in love with it. Wow. So I started uh, from there. Uh, people say, see my designs and they are, wow, who did mm -hmm. this? And they gave me the opportunity to actually go ahead and print for them. And that's how Benko Color started. Started. Uh, yeah. Mm. So it's also a very heavy investment in terms of uh, the type of business that without power, without uh, electricity, uh, a lot can't happen. For instance, even with your graphic design side of things, you have to have a computer, you have to have power to run that. Then also these huge machines, it's not small amounts of energy they use. So um, that was also a heavy risk in a, in a climate like Nigeria. How were you able to uh, surmount that hurdle? Okay, uh, good for, the truth about this is that uh, I started small. Okay. I started pretty small. I started with a desktop computer and I remember then uh, that my first office then was actually maybe a friend oh, wow. actually gave me the space to to sit within wow. that same office to do my things. Wow. And then immediately I was able to gather some fund. I, I was able to do, go get my own uh, small office. And from there, it has just been a, a, a journey of progression. But wow. for me, what I do, and which I encourage other, other younger ones that are coming in, the more you get resources, the, the more you get your profit, pull it back into the business. Mm -hmm. I remember I got my first machine. Uh, it's a very small machine then. It's 201 machine. I got it uh, for 350,000 around uh, wow. maybe 2002. Wow. Uh, that money was huge. Mm. That money as was huge 2002. as at 2002. Yeah. I, it was a very huge uh, fund, but I was able to save towards it. And uh, I was favored and I got that machine. I'm coming to that issue of power. Uh, we've scaled up over time. And then for me, one of the major challenges of our industry is power. Mm. Almost uh, maybe 70, I would say 70% of it goes because without power, you can't, you can't run your machines. Sure. Uh, without power, you can't run your machine. For me, uh, thank God for that's a bit of improvement about uh, the energy now. Yeah. And then it's, it's, a, it's a lot better now compared to then uh, that we bought, we are buying diesel for so much amount of money. It, 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 it's, it's quite challenging. I have to say, you know, um, even uh, the ink that you use, mm -hmm. um, I'm, most of them are imported. I don't think there are local ink manufacturers presently. Am I wrong? No, 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 you are right. Okay. Probably, I can say boldly that uh, 
print buyers, majorly all are, all our raw materials are import based. Wow. Oh, majorly of oh, paper that we talked about that which cut, uh, which is about uh, maybe seventy percent of our stuff yeah. is is yeah. import. Wow. It's import, and then the exchange that has dealt with us, as in, you can imagine the, uh, in, including our machinery as well. Wow. Uh, if you wanted to get any machine now from Europe, from Europe, the the, the amount of those machines still remain the same, but we need a lot of naira to convert to euro yeah. to get those machines in. Mm -hmm. So basically, most of all are what we use in yeah. the print uh, industries, are, they are imported. Yeah. So what do you think, um, in terms of government policies, for instance, what would help your industry now? What sort of adjustments could help printers and yourself, uh, well, like yourself, uh, maybe have a little bit more ease in doing business? Okay. Uh, thank you for that question. I am a member of the Chartered Institute of Professional Printers of Nigeria. Okay. And they, I think they, we've tried, they've come a long way in trying to meet with the government and do, to, to, to actually uh, make it known that printing job remains in Nigeria. Because one of the key things about our environment is that uh, for some of the publishers, they rather take the printing job outside wow. because they believe they have the capacity over there to deliver. But in our, in our little ways, in our environment, we have the capacity. But so there's that campaign uh, from, that, from the SIPON uh, that the, the, print, the printing industry, uh, the, print, uh, the, 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 the government agencies and, uh, should patronize printers in Nigeria. And then I think uh, in a short while, there will be a headway concerning that as well. Good. I'm very hopeful in that regard, very, very hopeful. And um, thank you for sharing your story with us. Uh, but I, I have to say, and this is a question we ask most SME owners, uh, why do you believe your customers keep coming back to you? Because there is quite a lot of saturation in this industry. There are a lot of printers out there, but some keep coming back to you. Why do you think that is? Uh, over time, we have developed capacity. I uh, have customers that are loyal to, to us for over two decades. As in, they've been loyal because we deliver consistently. And for me, in that organization, what we don't joke with is excellence. Okay. We have a core value. We have a, a core value in Benko Color Media Limited is rise, which is responsibility, integrity, service, and excellence. And but we hold wow. that one to our chest. When it comes to excellence, we don't we don't compromise that. And some of our clients over the years, they know. That you, okay, give this job to Benko Color, go and sleep, they will deliver. Wow. And then over time, we, we have a niche in the market for delivering excellence. Fantastic. I love the way you answered that. And I have a feeling your, your teams are, are somewhere really giving that applause because it, it also shows in the way you, you speak about it. And uh, being such a great speaker, I have to, you know, uh, highlight that you're wearing a rotary pin. Uh, on your lapel. Yeah. Uh, so you are, of course, a Rotarian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, please talk to us a little bit about your journey. Okay. The truth about it is that uh, Rotary has actually impacted the way I do my business. Because for me, uh, Rotary, it's a, it's a platform, it's a number one service organization in the world, which for me, it's about to make life better, easier for our community that we find ourselves. Uh, God has helped some, some of us that we need to give back to the community. And that which we have done, and that is the core of Rotary, giving back to the society. And uh, I'm fortunate, I'm, I'm privileged to be the incoming president of my club, Rotary wow. Club of Akowonjo. Wow. Uh, come July 1st, I'll be, the, I'll be, wow. I'll be taking over. Uh, Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, what's, your, what's your agenda for the next coming year? Wow. Uh, my agenda for the next coming year is for me, we need to build on the successes of, our, of my predecessor. I am blessed to have my, my, uh, my current president, Richard and Dr. Sukomi Amuye. She has done very lot debut this year. Okay. And for me, I wanted to, from where she stopped, I wanted to take it higher, to raise the bar, and uh, increase more on what we, the impact that we, we have in our community and in our, uh, our community and its environment. All right, so some are of the school of thought that um, clubs such as, you know, Rotary are things that were sort of thriving in, in the past, maybe over the, over the past five to ten years, it's not been as highlighted as it used to be, um, maybe because of the new generation we're in. The Gen Zs, for instance, the Gen Alphas, what, does Rotary have a plan to involve the younger people? Okay. In, in the uh, next fiscal year. Yeah, that, that, that's true. Uh, I think we have an arm 
we have an arm of a uh, Rotary Act, and for me, which one of the key things that we need to carry them along, and we wanted to do more about public image, because I think Rotary does much, uh, but we've come to realize that we don't, we don't put it out there. But in this coming year, we wanted to put it out there on social media, okay. most especially in, rela in relation to the Gen Z okay. and the, the new generation, yeah. to put it out there that come together, let's work together, let's team talk together to make our world a better place for every for uh, everyone out there. <laughs> I have to say thank you once again, Mr. Ben, for coming to talk to us about your business and your journey. And congratulations one more time on becoming the incoming president uh, for Rotary Akonwojo. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. All right, thank you so much for thank joining us. Thank you very us. much. It's a pleasure. All right, you probably noticed that something has been smelling really nice in, mm -hmm. the, in the studio. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed? Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. I, would you like to join us in the kitchen? Why not? Why not? All right. It's then. still very early in the morning. <laughs> I, I will be glad to. to All right, then. What is, what, Let's what, take a stroll. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>